Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 135 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. 135. I've been slacking. It's been a while, hasn't it? I bet it's been at least a month. Um, so today we're going to talk about comparison as an act of mental masturbation. It might feel good, <laughs> but it you know, according to the church, you can go blind. But um, it, it's a time waster, and it's a human thing that we do. And so it's not something to be beat yourself up about or um, freak out about. But it really is something to be aware of. A while ago, Heather Westmoreland and I tried to teach a course called Humility for Healers. Because we saw this comparison game happening, um, and it and it, you know it, it comes from thinking in hierarchies. It comes from patriarchy, uh, military, chain of command type thinking. So we were seeing it a lot, and uh, we thought, well, let's teach this course about being humble and how everyone has something to teach you, and you get more out of life when you go with beginner's mind. And um, of course, all the people we saw doing it were interested in that course, right? Like, so we were way off base on that. Excuse me for drinking coffee in your ear. I know that's gross, but I'm desperate. (laughs) I got all inspired and I was like, oh, maybe I should have finished my coffee first. Anyway, uh, I've heard it a couple of times lately of it's it's comparison in the opposite direction, the better than direction. Like well, like we can play the compare and despair game, and then we can play the compare and um, elate game or feel better game. Um, we do it all the time. Our brains are designed to compare and contrast and categorize. That's great, until it's costing you time, energy. It, it, producing stress hormones in your body is, is hitting on your health. And if you think you can spend a lot of time playing compare and despair and, uh, or uh, com- compare and, 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 de- and elate, compare and delight, let's say it that way. That's easier to say. Compare and delight. You delight yourself because you're so much more spiritual than that one. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> uh, my God, Becky, look at how spiritual I am. Okay. <laughs> if you think you can do that on a daily basis and still serve your clients with everything you have, you're wrong. You're wrong. There is an energy system called you, called me. I do it. You do it. Everybody does it. It's like, I'm a pepper. You're a pepper. Wouldn't you want to be a pepper? Don't you want to be a pepper too? That commercial's old for Dr. Pepper. Anyway, this is what happened when I didn't finish my coffee all the way. I've got ADHD tangential brain. So, um, but you're not giving the best to your clients. You're not giving the best to your family. You're not giving your best to your friends. You're not giving your best to anything. You don't have your best to give. If you are spending time wallowing in the compare and despair side, or if you're spending time soaring um, with wings made of arrogance on the compare and delight side, you're not available. You're not available for the full force of you. I'm not saying that you aren't serving your clients well and they're not benefiting from your work, but they aren't benefiting from the best of you because the best of you is not available because the mind is still too much in control. The mind is giving pref- the mind is being given preferential treatment. The mind is being indulged. With hours of, uh, she, I work so hard and, and that person doesn't work as hard as I do. And they, they have more clients than me and they have more money than me. (laughs) 
or I work so hard and that's why I'm so successful and I have more clients than you. And so I'm better than you. I'm obviously more spiritual than you. So I can sit in a room with you and I'm not, you can't teach me anything because I already know it all because look at how much money I have. Look at how many clients I have. I'm further along my spiritual path. So I'm better than you. Ew, it's so gross. It's so gross in either direction. One way sinks you to the bottom. The other way artificially lifts you above. Ew, 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 David. It's so gross. Okay, so, oosh, like I, and like I said, we all do it. And the invitation is to stop doing it. The invitation is to stop assigning hierarchies to the spirit world. When, as soon as someone says, I work with the ascended masters, I'm like, then you ain't for me, honey bunny, because that's bullshit. There's no ranking system in the spirit world. There's oneness and love. Unending, uh, uh, never ending, <clears throat> absolutely uh, love so unlimited that you can't even really wrap your mind around it because the mind is not designed to perceive the infinity of love. The mind is designed to help you live a human life and balance your checkbook. Although I never do that. Does anybody even have a checkbook anymore? I have checks just for the random people who absolutely refuse to set up a PayPal account <laughs> and, you know, cut the grass or something. Our, our invitation in these turbulent times is to seek joy actively, persistently, doggedly, diligently, and it is difficult. But what's more difficult is letting the mind continue to play games with you, costing you valuable time and energy and costing your clients the full force of you. When I hear that arrogant stuff come out of someone's mouth, I immediately know they're not serving their clients with the full force of their love. I'm, and I'm not saying they're not trying to, but when you're, and, and I'm not saying that they aren't giving their clients good stuff. They are. When, and when every time, any time we attempt to serve, even in our ham handed ways, even when we're first getting started and we really don't have any idea how to finesse a session or how to ask questions. And instead of pounding people with advice, um, we still, give people something. We're still trying. People are still getting stuff out of it, but they could be getting more. That's the issue. It's not that you're not doing good work, but the, it could be so much more. Be in the gang talk a lot lately about seeking joy, seeking it on purpose. Purposefully going after it. And let me rephrase that because going after it pushes it away. Yeah. So let's say purposefully relaxing into what is already in you, around you, permeating every cell of your being at all times. It's our mind that separates our perception of the infinity of love and joy available to us. It doesn't go away. So you, therefore you can't go get it. You can remember it. You can't go out and find happiness. You can't go out and find love. We've all tried that. Yeah. I can't be the only one that's banged my head on that brick wall more than 100,000 times. You can't go out and get it. You only can remember it. And remember that the bark, bark, bark of your border collie brain is the only reason you can't hear the voice of God. It's hard to hear over barking. 
Have you heard of Border Collie that's out of control and has too much energy and no job to do? My God, it's incessant. It's (laughs) mind-numbing. I pick on Border Collies a lot because they are just, they're a lot. They're a lot of dog. And they're so similar to our brains. Bark, 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 chase your tail, chase your tail, run in circles, scream and holler, (laughs) eat the furniture. (laughs) So, and then, uh, I mean, it's such a pervasive thing we do. We can even play the I'm more humble than you game. Well, I, you know, I recognize that and that's arrogant and everyone you encounter has something to teach you no matter how much school they've had or how long they've been in the business or if they even are have shoes or not. Everyone has something to teach you because everyone is an aspect of the one. So... It's being aware. It always comes back to awareness. We don't have to beat ourselves up for the things that our brain does. That's what our brain does. Listen, it's what your brain does. But you're the one in control of it. And too often we're like, oh, I can't. I just can't get off of social media. Oh, I can't stop comparing myself. I can't stop this or that. I can't stop indulging my addiction. I can't stop my... A 500 year long pity potty. Uh, Yeah, you can. You can. You're sovereign inside yourself. You might not know it. But my guess is if you're listening to this podcast, you do know it, at least to some degree, that you have an option. So this isn't tutti frutti, blah, 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 love and light, toxic positivity. It's be aware If there's something hurting you, notice how it can become compare, comparison. I think I'll spend my time comparing myself to others in a good way or a bad way uh, rather than deal with this wound that I'm avoiding, ignoring. Yeah. Notice how you start criticizing and attacking other people when you're in pain, but you aren't going to deal with it. You might need to get help to deal with some of those deeper things. You might need a coach or a therapist. You might need someone who's trauma-informed. You might need someone who understands the current research on nervous system regulation and how important it is. So much more important than we ever knew. We get new data all the time. We have to be learning all the time. You're the most dangerous when you stop learning. You are the most dangerous healer, coach, therapist when you decide I've learned enough I know what I need to know I can serve my clients I'm making a sustainable income therefore I don't need to pay attention to the new research because I already know I don't need to take that class again I already know it I don't need to sit in this uh, classroom with these people because I'm so far ahead of them I, I can't learn anything here I can't learn anything from them And conversely, I've had students say, well, I feel over my head, or I've heard, I've had students and I've heard students say, I can't learn anything here because everyone's so far ahead of me. I can't keep up. I'm just a beginner. There's nothing here for me. That's the mind. There's nothing here for me. There's not enough. I'm not going to get what I need. Or I already have what I need and you're wasting my time. Right? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. When you look at how many hours in the day you spend on mental masturbation topics, whether they're comparison or uh, whatever they are, we know, we know that we do this. But what what, what I'm calling you to is make a decision. Make a decision you're not going to do it. So that you can catch yourself doing it and go, oh, 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 oh. Oh, I made a decision. I wasn't going to do that. So what do I need to do? Is there some pain in me that I'm ignoring? Is there something practical that needs to be done and I don't really want to do it? Is there, you know, what needs to happen here? What's trying to happen here? What's going on here? I wonder. I wonder why. I wonder what. I wonder 
I wonder. I wonder what's happening here. I wonder what I'm feeling. I wonder what I saw or heard that created a disturbance in the forest. I wonder. I, I'm sure I've said this before, but Gay Hendrix, the guy who wrote The Big Leap, wrote a, another book whose name escapes me. It came out a few years ago. And it's filled with I wonder questions, and I just love it. It's actually a pretty small book. It's something about your genius. Maybe it's your zone of genius or something. I don't remember. If you go look, it's a book. I want to say it's from like 2017, maybe. So kind of new, but I guess not that new, come to think of it. But <clears throat> when we catch ourselves, first of all, you have to be aware Here's how you do this, okay? You have to be aware that you're doing it. My guides are better than your guides because they are ascended masters. <laughs> My guides are better than your guides because they were royalty. And your guide, your guide was cleaning up the mess in the Colosseum after the gladiators fought. So... <laughs> or that person has a degree and so I'm shit. <clears throat> or I've been in business for this long, but I don't have as much money as that person, so I'm garbage. My stuff must be garbage. Or whatever it is. So become aware that you're doing it. Set an alarm and for every 30 minutes and every 30 minutes check what were you just thinking about. And is that something you consciously want to choose <clears throat> to engage with? It can be astonishing if you do this for a few days and note what you're thinking about on a regular chronic basis. When you see the themes and the patterns in the thoughts that you're having, you can then make a decision to keep them or not. No one's telling you you have to stop thinking that shit. I'm just saying maybe try not thinking it and see how it goes. Maybe give yourself the experience of the alternative of catching yourself affirming, reaffirming, and reaffirming a thousand times a day your decision that you're not going to indulge in that and do what needs to be done instead. You'll be shocked at the amount of energy that you'll release when you close the energy leak of comparison. It is draining your energy. Such a client's draining your energy. It's your own damn head but draining your energy. And if you aren't resting with your mind on pause, you can rest day after day after day after day and still feel tired. It's your head. So rest encompasses more than the body. It encompasses let, teaching the mind to set things aside and let them go. Uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what her Instagram handle is. Is it just Rebecca Marshall? Re Rebecca Schisler, S-H-I-S-L-E-R. Marshall is doing some work on resting. So you may want to check that out. You find her on Instagram and Facebook. Can't remember her website. I should know this. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about rest, but I, I am encouraging you to remember joy. Let's say it that way. We need to remember joy. It is a repetitive message. It is a repetitive um, cure for the ills. It is a repetitive information coming through, not just me, but several people saying, I know that it that makes no sense logically and to the mind to be um, contemplating how can I feel more joyful today when things are still so topsy-turvy and there's so much pain all around. But here's the thing. If you are 
embedded, invested, immersed in joy, you will heal everyone you come into contact with. Even if you're just on a Zoom call with them, your radiant light warms them just like a fire, just like a wood stove on a cold day. Imagine a wood stove thinking, well, I shouldn't burn very brightly because, you know, the wood stove next door, they don't have enough wood, so I should probably just burn a little bit bright. And your family freezes to fucking death. <laughs> right? That's a terrible analogy. Uh, okay. But think about it. So you become aware of it. You make a decision. You know what? I've done this for how many years? I'm I'm not doing it anymore. I'm going to set an intention that I'm going to catch myself, even if that means setting an alarm every 30 minutes. And I'm going to choose something different to see what it's like to go through life, seeing everyone on a level playing field, not in a hierarchy, not in a better than, worse than. My brain's always going to put people in better and worse than, and also I don't have to engage with that. My brain can do that in the background. I don't have to listen to it. I don't have to let it make decisions. I don't have to let it block me from the magic in every single fucking moment of your life. You're surrounded by it. But you cannot perceive it if you're busy comparing yourself and evaluating and judging. If that's your for forward focus. Put that shit in the background. You can't stop it, but you don't have to let it be in the front. You don't have to let it be closing your the doors to your further awakening, your further expansion, your further ability to serve from the fullness of you, not the little bit we get from a cracked open door, even a half open door. Like if you're a healer, don't you want to serve from a fully open door? Don't you want to be so well resourced that you can serve clients all day long and end up with more energy at the end of the day? Yeah, your physical body might need to lay down and rest a little bit, but you aren't tired. You're not exhausted. You don't have to take a whole day off to recover from your healing because you're so connected. You're so resourced. You understand that you're the conduit, not the orchestrator of it. You understand that you are one note in a very, very large and complex orchestra. You understand that. So you aren't elbowing the clarinet uh, because you're the flute and you think you're better than the clarinet. Like you're not trying to make your note louder so that you can be heard over the other notes. You're playing your note and you're playing it well. And your aspect of the whole is as perfect as it can be because you understand that your brain does brain things and you understand that your soul does soul things. You understand that you can be aware of all the things so that you can make conscious, sovereign choices in every moment. You can apply some joy to that. Oh, it feels so good to be aware. I'm so joyful that I'm aware of the stupid shit I do. I'm so happy that I can see the games my brain has been playing. Because I don't have to play them now. I never did have to, but I didn't know that. But now that I know that, I don't have to. Now that you know it, you have more responsibility to do something about it. My, I had a professor that I really loved and she would always say, you can't ever go back because now I've spit in your soup. <laughs> I've spit in your soup with knowledge and you can never pretend that you don't know. Again, you must choose. I'm actually not going to do anything about the way I compare. Okay, fair enough. But make a conscious choice. Don't live by default and then whine and complain and or elevate yourself over everybody else. Make a conscious choice. You're going to be like that? Okay. 
Uh, seriously, I know that sounds like, all right, if you don't want to wear a coat and you freeze, it's okay with me. I know it sounds like I'm being um, sarcastic and I kind of am, but I'm also sincerely telling you, you make a conscious choice that you're going to let yourself play the compare and despair game for the rest of your life. I can absolutely respect that and applaud you in it. If it's a conscious decision that you're making, that you're not making it by default or because you just don't want to do the work that would make you feel better. Yeah. I respect your decision when it's consciously made. I respect an alcoholic who's like, you know what? <laughs> I am what I am and I'm going to stay what I am. I'm a, I'm a person who drinks to excess and that's fine by me. Okay. I won't be around, but that's okay. Make a, making a conscious choice. I absolutely respect that. It, each of us has this body and this life and we actually do get to do whatever we want to do with it. But let those choices be sovereign, conscious, aware choices that you're not going to do the work to get better, to feel better, to serve better. And you're just going to spend this life stuck in addiction or blindness or comparisonitis or whatever it is you choose, but make it a choice. And if you're choosing to serve more fully, more authentically, more, more openly, uh, then you got to do, there's stuff you have to do and it's going to be uncomfortable. You got to check yourself before you wreck yourself uh, every day. Oh, uh, am I getting snotty about what that person do is doing? Well, why am I even paying attention to what that person's doing when I've got a laundry list of shit I need to do? Put the phone down, bub, and go do your own work. You don't like how somebody runs their business? So what? Put it down and go do the laundry list of shit you're not doing in your business. And send them love and gratitude that they're demonstrating to you things that you need to see for yourself. Okay. That's all I have for today on that. Don't waste your time on this stuff. We need you at your best. We need you at your fullest expression. We need you as the clearest, widest, most available, resourced conduit that you can be because joy is trying to permeate the darkness and it comes through us and we need to be more available for it. This world is in a lockdown of tense, thick fog. And we are carrying the light within us. But it's up to us whether we shine it as a flicker, whether we shine it as a beacon, a lighthouse, whether we shine like an entire football field that's lit up at night, or whether we shine, at, you know, like a tiny little candle. And that's okay. Some days are tiny candle days. Some days are football field days. <laughs> but you know, it's us. It's us. It's not them that are going to make the change. They don't have to do shit. You have to figure out why you're spending your time playing these mental games instead of amplifying your capacity to hold joy, which means probably doing some nervous system work, which may mean doing some trauma work, which may mean doing some other kinds of work that are uncomfortable. But the gift is you get more expression of joy flowing through you. You get more, uh, we'll just say return on your investment. You spend 15 minutes several times a day, not even, because I know people are going, I don't have 15 minutes several times a day. Yeah, 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 Sharon, whatever. But you have your mind all day. So I don't care what you're doing. You can be relaxing into remembering joy. You can do that while you're driving. You can do it while you're cooking dinner. You can do it while you're writing your book. You can do it while you're uh, doom scrolling. 
You can catch yourself and choose differently. Okay. Become aware of it. Make a decision and that you're not going to do it. And then practice set an alarm because you won't remember. And then every time that alarm goes off, relax and remember the truth, the joy, the love, everything that's right here every minute. And we just forget. Fall asleep, wake up, fall asleep, wake up. That alarm goes off. You go, oh, shit, I was asleep. Let me wake up. How can I feel more love today? How can I feel more joy today? How can I embrace my pain with love? Not to make it go away, but to give it space so it can resolve itself. I don't really have to do anything. How can I make more room, more space for more love, more joy? And practice it a thousand times a day. For the rest of your life. (laughs) It actually won't be a thousand times a day for the rest of your life, but you'll always have to practice it because the heaviness in this world and the way our mind functions to be in this world will always be calling you back. And that's okay because the practice gets fun. Okay, honey buddies, that's all I've got for you. Um, Let's see, for business stuff, I don't have any groups on offer. That's not true. I have a business basics for the Woo Crew coming up. Um, That is on my Facebook page. It's not on the website. If you want a link to it, I'll put it in a Google Doc and and fire it off to you. You know what? I might put the Google. Nah, I was going to say, nope, never mind. That's not going to work. There'll be a Facebook pop-up group. It's $111 for a half a day workshop. Bring all your problems, your copy problems, your website problems, your I have to be on all the social medias problems. Um, And we can knock that stuff out. We'll draw in a little bit of human design, but it's not completely human design based. So other than that, I don't have anything coming up, but I have have an opening for a one-on-one client. I have uh, every, all the time clarity sessions available where you just show up, bring your problems, and we we fix them. <laughs> we fix you. I have the confusion cure, which is around writing your sales copy, a sales page, a landing page, um, finding the words and the layout for your online offer or even your in-person offer that's available, the confusion cure that's on the, my Facebook cover page. And then of course, human design foundation sessions are always available. Uh, and that is on planethumandesign.com right there at the top book a foundation session. If you've already know your human design, but you want to combine a human design and a clarity session, like you have some stuff you want to work through and you want to make sure that we're framing it with human design, you just go on the planethumandesign.com and, and pick a book a foundation session. And that's the same, it's the same thing. All right, honey bunnies, we will talk to you next time. Uh, you know where to find me, planethumandesign.com, thatmichellewolf.com, and of course, facebook.com forward slash michellewolf11. Until we talk again, think less, feel more. I'll see you later. <laughs>